Good morning, Y Church. Thank you so much for joining us on Facebook and YouTube Live this morning. If you are new or newer to the Y Church, we invite you to fill out an online connection card. You can fill that out and we would love to send you a gift just to say that we're glad that you're here. This week we're continuing our series on Elijah and Elisha called A Double Portion and today we get to learn more about what that double portion part is all about and really see God at work in an extraordinary way through Elijah and Elisha. As always, we're going to post that sermon podcast this week so you can check it out or share it with friends. Next week, July 5th, we will be online only for the holiday weekend. It is also a, the first Sunday of the month, so don't forget we are celebrating communion. So prepare um, bread or crackers and juice or wine, and we get to remember what Christ did on the cross for us together. We wanted to update you on the why. Uh, they are planning to reopen July 6th, with it, which is super exciting. 
Um, they're going to have limited time and capacity, and we will keep you posted on our service location and what plans will look like moving forward. Please know that even as we start to gather in person, we will continue online worship for anyone who is unable to attend or chooses not to. Uh, we know this is different for every family and their choices. Well, it's been a fun week with some new things happening in kids and student ministry. We had a great time at our tie-dye party on Wednesday night at Andrea's house. And today I am wearing the shirt for our VBS in a box called Focus. We have the opportunity to partner with River of Life and Central for VBS this year. And here is a short video to tell you more about that. Hi guys, we're so excited. We're gonna take some time to announce this year's Focus VBS in a Box. I'm Joy from Central Lutheran Church, and this is... I'm Christina from River of Life. I'm Megan from the Y Church. And we are just so excited because we're partnering together to put on this event for you. We're going to be doing VBS together July 13th through the 15th online. You guys are going to get a box, and Megan's going to tell you where you can get it. You can get it at Central Lutheran Parking Lot, and Joy's going to tell you more about that. Yeah, we're having a great pickup party. So on the day before, on July 12th, we're going to get together, and we are going to have a pickup party from 3 to 5 p.m. There's going to be bubbles, there's going to be a dunk tape, we're going to have uh, photo booths for you guys, and we just can't wait to celebrate the kickoff of our VBS. So you can do this at home with your family, so you can invite friends or neighbors to join you in your backyard. We're going to focus on God this summer, and we're going to invite you to take a closer look. You can register by using the link below. We can't wait to see our VBS. Hope you will register to join us on the in on the fun. You'll find registration at the whychurch.org backslash children. And just send me a message if you have any questions about anything. Well, many of you know that our church has been serving a meal in the Little Earth neighborhood these past few weeks. It was just amazing to see so many people involved and to be able to show love to our neighbors in such a tangible way. And now as we move into July, we are looking forward to our new partnership with Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist in Minneapolis. Church also has a blue ribbon charter school and we have lots of educators in our church and people who are passionate about education. A group from our church met with their pastor last week and we're really excited to see how God uses this partnership as we continue to grow in our understanding of what it looks like to live out the gospel with our neighbors. This week, it is the first Thursday of the month, July 2nd, and that means it is our monthly prayer call from 7 to 7.30 p.m. And you are welcome to call in and pray or simply listen. The number to call in is below and also on our social media page. Remember that you can always reach out for prayer just by emailing prayer at the whychurch.org. And at the end of the service today, prayer ministers will also be available to pray with you. Just send us a message with your contact information and someone will be in touch shortly. Don't forget, you can always reach a pastor at 763-250-9504. We would be glad to help you in any way that we can. Just briefly, I want to mention that you can also utilize a few different giving options. We are so grateful for God's provision through your gifts each week to carry out our mission of seeking Jesus, connecting together, and sharing his love. You can schedule gifts on the ychurch.org slash egiving or use our mobile giving option by just texting YGIVE to 77977. You can also mail your offerings in. And now, this morning, I invite you to... Just settle in to God's presence wherever you might be, and let's join John as we worship together through song. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a good week. I invite you to join me wherever you might be at as we do some worship songs this morning. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, 
And we are the voice in the desert Crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord Behold, He comes Riding on the clouds Shining like the sun At the trumpet call Lift your voice It's the year of Jubilee Out of Zion's hills Salvation comes And these are the days of Ezekiel The tribal becoming as flesh and these are the days of your servant, David, rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as wide in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds. Like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. The old he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call. Come breathe on. 
Come breathe on us. Come breathe on us. I'm going to send it over to the Krieger household for our beginner's Bible reading this morning, and then I'll be back a little bit later for one more song. Thanks. Chariot of Fire. A man named Elisha was plowing the field. God chose Elisha to be Elijah's helper. Over the years, they traveled together. They told many people about God's love. One day, they stopped beside the river. Elisha took off his coat and struck the water with it. The river opened up. They walked across on a dry path. Elijah was getting older. God was preparing to take him to heaven. Elijah asked Elisha if there was anything he wanted. Elisha answered, I want a double portion of the spirit God has given you. Suddenly, a fiery chariot pulled by fiery horses came down from the sky, separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind to be with God. Elijah's coat fell on the ground. Elisha picked it up. He struck the water with it, and water parted, and the water parted. Then Elisha knew God had granted his request. Hey, good morning, everybody. Evelyn, great to have you read our beginner's Bible reading today. I love your name, too, Evelyn. It's always caught my attention. It's a great name. We're going to share in our kids' blessing now. And for this last Sunday of June, we are in Jeremiah 29. When we start a new month uh, next week, we'll have a new kids' blessing for July. But here from Jeremiah 29, we're going to bless the kids who are with us, maybe there in your living room. You can bless people from a distance. You can have a, a chance to personalize this blessing. There's a blank line where you can fill in the name or names of those you'd like to bless this morning. Um, let's just join in these words together. Beautiful words of promise. God knows the plan he has for you. They are good plans filled with hope for the future. Amen. All right, next is our table question, our living room question these days of online worship. And that for you this morning is this, what is something so tasty that you'd like a double portion? What's something so tasty that you'd like a double portion? You can discuss there, that at home there with those around you or use the Facebook comments window and we can drop in some answers there. And in a couple minutes, we're gonna hear scripture. Aaron Marsh is reading for us today. Good morning, everybody. Our scripture reading today comes from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. Elijah taken up to heaven. 
When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over onto dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise not. As they were walking set along, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. He picked up the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak that had fallen from him and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord of God of Elijah? he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. Thanks, Aaron, again for reading. Uh, it's been fun over the years to see how Aaron has poured into the lives of his three sons and also now into a whole bunch of other young men who are part of student ministry at the Y Church. Aaron's one of our, our volunteer leaders uh, serving alongside a whole team. And it's so important that we have spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers who are investing in the life of the next generation. Uh, it reminds me of a relay race, if you did track and field, you know, where one runner passes the baton to the next runner. The one runner is, in a sense, finishing their race and then sending the next runner on. That's exactly what we're going to see here today in 2 Kings 2 with Elijah and Elisha. They even have similar names. And Elijah is the spiritual father who is now passing the baton to a spiritual son. In this exchange, Elijah is going to ask him, what can I do for you before I'm gone? To which Elisha responds, as Aaron just read for us, I'd like a double portion. And I wonder if you could double anything in your life right now, what would it be? You know, to put it, put it bluntly, there seems to be a lot going wrong in 2020. And you could maybe really use a second helping of something. Maybe you would double your income. Maybe you double your health or stamina. Maybe you double your grade point average or you double your retirement account. Maybe you'd really like to double the square footage of your house or double the distance between your neighbors. At a deeper level, maybe you would double your joy or contentment. Or maybe you would double the years of your life. What would you ask for? What is it that you really need right now? We're going to travel today with this spiritual father and son as the baton is passed from one to the next. And we're going to think specifically about the double portion that we could be asking for. Second Kings 2 is this chapter where the story shifts from Elijah to Elisha. 
And we've known this moment is coming ever since 1 Kings 19, which is where God tells Elijah that he is to go and anoint Elisha to succeed him as prophet. And it's a remarkable little story. I'd like to turn there with us briefly this morning as we get started. 1 Kings 19. So flip back to that chapter, 1 Kings 19, starting in verse 19. It says, So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. So let's pause there. You know what this means? It means that Elisha was certainly no poor farm kid. I mean, this description tells us this is a serious operation with some serious money in it. Elisha's got 12 yoke of oxen. In our terms, it's like driving a a brand new John Deere chisel plow, like 60 foot wide. And this is significant because Elisha is about to leave it all behind. Second half of the verse. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him, which is a symbolic gesture of passing the baton. Verse 20, Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said. So Elisha left him and went back, and he took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and become his servant. So you see what happened here. He says goodbye. He burns the bridge. So there's no way to go back to his old way of life. And he throws a going away party with his neighbors. Elisha is fully committed. And it reminds me of Jesus' invitation to those fishermen disciples in the Gospels. Different industry, but it's the same idea. Jesus comes along and says, come and follow me. And it says, immediately. They left their nets, they they burned their plows, and followed him. And we can't help but read about Elijah and Elisha and think about the importance of mentorship. Paul says to the Corinthians, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And sometimes it's so helpful to have something you can see as you follow the one you can't. So who are you following as you follow Jesus? Who is a spiritual father or mother to you? And at the same time, who is the next generation that is coming up behind you? On whom are you casting the mantle of leadership? There's a a lot of things that are still on hold this year. A lot of things still not happening. And the future, I find, remains very uncertain. Mentorship and relationships are not. These can be areas of great investment this summer. And I want to challenge you to go there. I mean, I I know how it is. Culturally, uh, many of us can tend to be private people. We we like to think that we can take care of our own problems, that we we can go it alone. But that's not the way that God designed you to live. So can you answer these two questions this week? Number one, who is my mentor? And number two, who am I intentionally mentoring? In other words, who is my Elijah and who is my Elisha? This is the day in 2 Kings 2 now when Elijah will go home to the Lord. But it's going to happen in a spectacular way. It starts with this unusual little walking tour that we read about. And there's this pattern where Elijah would say to Elisha, he'd say, stay here. The Lord is sending me to such and such a place. And then Elisha always retorts and says, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. And then Elisha would follow him down the road to the next place. And we see something here of Elisha's loyalty, his determination, and his persistence. And I don't want to read too much into the text, but let me just suggest that Elisha would not have been in the position for a double portion if he had stopped following Elijah. He sticks to it all those miles. And along the way, they run into these groups of other prophets who are serving the Lord. And we have these funny exchanges where they would say to Elisha, they'd say, you know, this is your master's last day. To which Elisha would say, I know that already. So be quiet. You know, I mean, we see this is a tough day for Elisha. 
Got to give the guy some space. So here they are walking from place to place, and, and we start to catch these names and put them together. So they start in Gilgal, they go to Bethel, uh, then they're in Jericho, and they finally end up at the Jordan River. And you, you know what this is. It's, it's actually the reverse of the first movements of Israel when they came into the Promised Land. So this would be back in Joshua 1 through 8. Uh, there, the, the people with Joshua at the helm, they cross the Jordan. They march around Jericho, they go to Bethel, then to Gilgal, and now we see Elijah and Elisha retracing that route. And not only does it draw a comparison for us to Moses and Joshua, but it reminds us, and listen carefully to this, that every foot of the promised land belongs to God. Maybe this summer you need to retrace some ground and remember that every foot of your life has belonged to God. That's what they're doing. It's good to go back and remember what he has done. The victories won, the promises delivered, to revisit the stories of where you saw God move in your life in a powerful way. So I don't know, a few ideas of what that could look like. Maybe it's a driving tour of some significant places in your past. Maybe it's just there at home to walk around the house or walk around your property and pray over those spaces. Maybe it's to to look at a bunch of old photos and tell the stories of one generation to the next. Elijah and Elisha are retracing the story until it finally leads them to the Jordan. And then there with 50 eyewitnesses looking on, Elijah strikes the water with his cloak, the river splits in two, and the men walk across on dry ground. It's like uh, Joshua crossing the Jordan. I mean, this is what we're supposed to be remembering as we read it. It's just like Moses as he parted the Red Sea. It is a miraculous confirmation that the Lord is here, and he is working specifically through Elijah. As soon as Elijah and Elisha, these, these two men, cross to the other side, they're on the eastern side of the river. Now it's just the two of them, and Elijah turns and asks that question in verse 9, where he says, tell me, what can I do for you before I'm gone? And it reminds me of Solomon, when he gets to ask for anything in the world, and he asks for wisdom. You know, Elijah just split a full rushing river into two, and he asks Elisha, what can I do for you? And And I wondered for myself, what what would I say if that question was posed to me? Here is what Elisha asks for. He says, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. He could ask for anything. And he asks for a double portion of the spirit. I can think of a lot of things where a second helping would be really nice. I think of Sue Black's caramel rolls. I think of Carol Bolter's Christmas cookies or Mary Appleton's snickerdoodles. You can see there's, there is a theme here. But Elisha, Elisha asks for a second helping of the Spirit of God, a double portion. Portion is a word you might recognize from other places in the Bible. It's a significant word. And you might remember such lines as um, we started the year here in Lamentations 3, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Another one that comes to mind would be Psalm 73, where it says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. But what does it mean when we say that God is our portion? You know, when we think portion in our culture and setting, we think of things like portion control and portion size. But in Bible times, they heard the word portion and they thought of property and inheritance. A portion was an allotment or share of land and wealth. And in its normal sense, it would, be, it would be used quite literally to mean that. But then in Scripture, it starts to get picked up in a spiritual sense, like in those passages I mentioned. The Lord is my portion, is what we read, not a piece of land. Uh, he is my inheritance, not a piece of property. And yet here we see Elisha asking not just for a portion, but what does he ask for? He asks for a double portion. 
You know, at Dairy Queen, you can pay 59 cents and get extra stuff in your blizzard. Elisha is asking for extra stuff, a double portion. But what is that? Well, in their culture, a father's land and wealth was apportioned to his sons when he died. And they were evenly divided portions except for the eldest son. The eldest son received a double portion. So let's say the normal portion for a father was um, $10,000, just to use even numbers here. Each son gets $10,000 except the oldest. The oldest would have got $20,000. It's spelled out in Deuteronomy 21. This is called the right of the firstborn. And I know at home right now, all of those younger siblings are cheering that we no longer do this. But this, in their time, in their way, was how a father transferred his estate and his responsibility to the next generation. And Elisha has the wherewithal to ask for a double portion. But not in terms of land or wealth. Remember, Elisha's had plenty of that in the past. I mean, he, he burned it up and left it behind. What Elisha sees in Elijah that he desires more than anything else is the relationship that Elijah has with the Lord. And it's like he he responds to him and says, Elijah, the Spirit of God is with you, and of all the things that I could wish for, I'd like to know God like you know him. And I wonder if you have ever known someone where you felt that way, where there was just something about their relationship with the Lord that was so real a depth to it, a steadiness, a maturity to their walk with the Lord. Someone you looked up to spiritually and and you you thought, I'd just like to have more of what they have. Just a few weeks ago, I was remembering this old retired pastor at the church where I interned when I was in college. Uh, He wasn't working anymore. I think he'd been retired for quite some time, but he and his wife still attended the church and And they invited me over for Thanksgiving dinner. This was on the West Coast. And so I wasn't going to be coming home here to to the Twin Cities for Thanksgiving. They had me over. And I remember getting to know this couple quite well over over those, those years. They were just the sweetest couple. And he was a humble, godly man. And and for me was an example of what it would mean to finish well after serving as a pastor. So now, uh, this is just a few weeks ago. It's almost Almost 20 years later, we have not stayed in touch, uh, and, and they were well up there in years when I knew them. So, so I was just kind of wondering, remembering them and thinking, I, w- I wonder how their story finished. So I typed into Google, Pastor Rosenau obituary, and I hit enter. And I looked down the search results, and, and I couldn't find anything. So, you know, I, I tried another couple combos. I typed in the city or, or the church name. I tried that, and I couldn't find the obituary. So this is starting to dawn on me a little bit, and I, I'm thinking, no, this, this is no way. But I delete the word obituary, hit enter, and up pops a video of Pastor Rosenau preaching a sermon just back in February. He's alive. And I just, I couldn't believe it. I was amazed. Later that evening, I was, I was coming back from somewhere in town and I was in the car and I'm just thinking back to this from earlier in the day and, and how amazing it was. And I say to my phone, you know, just kind of on a whim, like very little confidence that, that this would work. I say to my phone, Siri, call Pastor Rosenau. I have no idea if he's in my contacts. I have no idea if he is, if there's a phone number that would even work. Phone starts ringing. Rings a couple times. And then on the other end, I hear this old familiar voice say, hello. And I tell you what, I pulled over that car as fast as I could. And I had the most wonderful conversation with Pastor Rosenau and his wife. Uh, He put me on speaker. And uh, we spent 20 minutes on the phone together. I I have no idea how old they are now. I I could not bring myself to tell him that I called him only after failing to find his obituary. But they told me about what their great-grandchildren are doing, and he still helps out and does pulpit supply. That's why I saw that video. 
they loved hearing about the Y Church and about our ministry and the YMCA. And it was just so special to me. It, it encouraged me spiritually. And that's how I remember them. He was someone that I could look up to spiritually, someone who knew the Lord in a way that I wanted to. And that's what Elisha is asking for here, to inherit what Elijah has spiritually, a double portion. And so let me ask you again, what is it that you would ask for? What is it that you really need right now? You know, there's something about asking for a double portion that might seem very counterintuitive in this season. This year and this time feels more like we're just trying to hang on. You know, we're just trying to survive 2020, forget uh, double portions or extra blessings. We're, we're just trying to get through this year. And if we're not careful, that can really become our frame of mind about 2020 or even longer. We, we slip into survival mode, a, a scarcity mindset. Uh, Job says eyes of flesh, uh, eyes of flesh that cower at the, at the uncertainty. And while it's true that there are going to be things right now that are in short supply, the gift of God's spirit to you is not among them. And I want to encourage you to go on a walk with the Lord this week or to sit quietly with him and to ask for a double portion of his spirit. That's not something we take lightly, but nor is it something that should be missed. Hebrews 4 says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You know, this morning I'm, I'm just inside our, our front door here, and and I'm reminded that virtually anyone who comes to our house is going to knock or ring the doorbell and wait to be let in. But guess who the exceptions would be? Uh, my three kids. They just, they just barge on in anytime they want. I mean, it's their house, right? In the summertime, they're in and out this door 25 times a day. In, in, if they skin a knee or they need help with something or they get in a fight, or they need a bike tire pumped in, they just come on in and ask. Coming in unannounced and asking is what children do when they're home. Coming and asking for a double portion is what children get to do. And that is what you are, a beloved child of God, because Jesus gave his life for you at the cross. No shame. No stain of sin, no waiting at the door, but you are free and forgiven through the atoning death of Christ. When you receive him as your savior, you become a son or daughter of God. And Paul says, if we're children, then we're heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. So I just urge you this week to go to your heavenly father. Just go on in and ask for a double portion of his spirit. Elisha makes his request. And that takes us into the rest of the story. Uh, in short summary now, Elijah is whisked up to heaven in supernatural fashion on a chariot of fire. Then Elisha picks up his cloak that he left behind, splits the river just like Elijah did. And that serves as confirmation that the baton of leadership has now been passed and the double portion of the spirit that Elisha asked for has been given. What would you have asked for? What are you right now in the process of inheriting? I'll tell you a story to close. I think it was last summer, pretty sure it was last summer, that I was over at my parents' house. And my dad said to me, um, you know, something he'd never said to me before. He said, Bjorn, let's walk the property and let me show you where the property lines are. You know, we'd never done that before and I didn't know where they were. And the sense was that if, if something should happen to my dad, then I would be in the position to help my mom and know where their property was. And, and I remember that walk with my dad and he's pointing out the stakes and, and where the lines run. 
And it's one of those times where you just have this clear sense that time is marching on and the years are passing by. And I remember being on that walk and realizing in, in a very new way that one day my dad wouldn't be there anymore. And, and I thought to myself, I, I don't want any of this, uh, the land or the house. I just want my dad, the guy who's walking on the trail ahead of me. It's my relationship with him. That's, that's what really matters. That's my inheritance. And I want to ask you this morning that as you walk through the years of your life, what are you in the process of inheriting? What is it that you need? What is it that you would ask for? Because it can't be the land under your feet that's falling away quickly. It has to be the one who walks beside you. The relationship that you can have with the living God who loves you. Make him your portion. And he'll make it a double. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great privilege it is to call you Abba Father, such a term of affection, that out of your love and forgiveness, you have called us your children. Then I pray, Lord, for each one who happens to be listening to this message right now, that, that we would steal away from our worries this week and seek a double portion in our relationship with you. Don't leave us, Lord, where we are right now. Um, it's, not, it's not enough. We, we need more of you. For you alone are our inheritance. And in you, Lord, we will be fully satisfied. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Let's sing together, and then I'll be back to close out the service. Can hardly 
speak is so unexplainable. I, I can hardly think as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Well, as we now pray the words of the Lord's Prayer, we're reminded that this is a prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray, uh, where they, they get to ask the Father for the things that they need, which includes um, to revere his name, to walk in his will, to live for his glory, to ascribe greatness to who God is. So let's do that together now. We bow our heads and we join in these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I say it every week, but it is really a joy to worship with you. Thanks for joining us this morning. You are a special part of this community, even when we can't meet and we do online worship. We look forward to being together again next week. Just a reminder, next week, July 5th, is online worship only at 930, and uh, we'll stay in touch throughout the week. Let me share this blessing as we go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you like this sun and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and may he give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, this triune God whom we belong to. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next time.